ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. Lesh, thank you for coming, Mike, thank you for coming to Israel, thank you for joining the session. I will be presenting you a cooperation between uh, uh, a private company and the Tel Aviv Medical Center. Uh, is the development of a continuous arrhythmia detection with novel biosensing uh, technology. My obvious conflicts of interest are stated in, uh, in stated there. So this forum does not need to be reminded why do we need an arrhythmia monitoring in ambulatory patients. Um, first, we need to detect asymptomatic atrial fibrillation to prevent stroke, and this is because one out of three strokes are due to atrial fibrillation. Uh, many of these strokes occur shortly after the onset of atrial fibrillation, very often asymptomatic, and anticoagulation may prevent stroke. Uh, we is obviously important to detect uh, cardiac arrest. Uh, you remember the era when there were public telephones on every corner. Very soon we will have automatic uh, defibrillators on every corner, but we'll still need an arrhythmia detection to start the, the chain of survival. And finally, it is nice to be able also to detect uh, other arrhythmias, particularly if it's easy to do it. So um, this is a development of the uh, technique of, photo, of the PPG, photopletismography, which takes advantage of the fact that if you send um, a light, um, it will return and will show you um, saturation, in, also including um, the waves that will reflect actually the, the, the cardiac contraction. So this is will be used in this technique as a surrogate for the electrocardiogram. Um, so what we did is a series of experiments, and I have to tell you that this, all these experiments were, were conducted in patients at the resting state. Obviously one of the, the main challenge is going to be to get similar good quality recordings in moving patients. But this is just the first example just to show you uh, the Lorentz plot, which shows you the RR interval uh, in, in the context of the next RR interval. So on one side you see the electrocardiogram, and on the other hand, the simultaneously recording PPG, and you can see that the Lorentz plots are, are very, very similar, with most of the sinus being concentrated in one area, and some exosystoles are going out of, of the main area of interest. So, what we perform is first uh, we did um, uh, recordings during simultaneous ECG recordings with the PPG. So this is an ECG and the <coughs> simultaneous PPG recording. Uh, it is in a watch that has also contact sensors and motion, uh, motion filters. And this graph shows you um, the correlation between <clears throat> the RR intervals from the electrocardiograms and the PPG signals in 10 patients who were admitted for cardioversion of atrial fibrillation. So you can see there is a very, very nice correlation between the RR intervals recorded from the electrocardiogram and the simultaneous RR intervals recording from the PPG. This is an example of atrial fibrillation just before cardioversion. This is recorded at the low paper speed. You can see the irregularity in the RR interval in the electrocardiogram. And you can see the same irregularity recording in the PPG that nicely shows not only that the RR interval is irregular, also the amplitude of the signals changes from beat to beat. This can eventually be used also in the algorithm for detection after fibrillation. In an automatic algorithm that is mainly based on irregularity, the sensitivity for detecting uh, after fibrillation was very high. The specificity, the specificity and the negative, um, uh, a positive and negative predictive value uh, were very high. This is an example of a patient uh, admitted for cardioversion. So this is the electrocardiogram. First show the atrial fibrillation, the DC shock, conversion to sinus rhythm, and this is the simultaneously recorded PPG signal. 
again showing the irregularity in the signals, also in the amplitude and also in the error interval that becomes a regular rhythm immediately after current diversion. Again, one more example of back articulation, uh, nicely showing that each beat is uh, highly is very accurately represented by the simultaneous PPG signal. We also did some uh, recordings during arrhythmia provocation during electrophysiologic studies or during induction of ventricular fibrillation at the time of ICD implantation. So these are uh, patient, 20 patients when studying during EP studies or during VF induction. So this is um, an example to represent non-sustained VT. There is a sinus beat here followed by a burst of ventricular pacing and extra stimuli just to rep, uh, as a surrogate for non-sustained VT. And you can see the simultaneous PPG signals, very clear, very um, highly representing what's happening in the electrocardiogram. You can see that after the pause, there is an increase in the amplitude of the PPG signal, and then the rapid recordings of the simulated non-sustained VT. This is the induction of uh, sustained ventricular tachycardia. So we have basic pacing, a burst of extra stimuli, and then induction of rapid uh, ventricular tachycardia. This is shown in the DPG signals. We lose a bit, a few of the signals during the initial uh, QRS complexes. We missed a few, but then eventually we have a one-to-one -one detection of all the QRS complexes in the PPG. Um, this is documentation of uh, spontaneous ventricular tachycardia that happens during an uh, EP study. So here you have sinus rhythm at, at a low paper speed and the spontaneous onset of the very rapid more morphic ventricular tachycardia. You can see it in the PPG signal and there is one-to-one -one representation of the QRS complexes. This is shown here at a low paper speed during the sustained VT. And here I put the dots that was that are recorded automatically, and you can see that there is a one-to-one -one correlation between the uh, electro EEG signals and the PPG signals. This is the uh, termination of the morphic ventricular tachycardia. And you can see it during the EEG and the simultaneous PPG signals. And again, there is a one-to-one -one correlation between the QRS complexes and the PPG. We're missing uh, very few beats. And you can see when the tachycardia terminates, also the amplitude of the signals immediately increases. These are two bits that we missed during the entire episode. Uh, a little bit more of the same, spontaneous ventricular tachycardia lasting 10 seconds. And you can see not only the increase in rate, also the simultaneous decrease in amplitude of the PPCG signal. Once the tachycardia terminates, we are back to the sinus rhythm also recorded by PPG. We simulated a uh, radioarrhythmic arrest by injecting adenosine. This is during a PPI isolation, so the adenosine was injection was indicated. So uh, here you have sinus rhythm, then you have paroxysmal latent block caused by adenosine lasting a few seconds, and it goes without saying this is very easily detected by the PPG. The algorithm begins to detect uh, cardiac arrest here and confirms cardiac arrest after a few more seconds. Finally, we have the, indu the induction of ventricular fibrillation, um, sinus rhythm, a few <coughs> rapid beats, shock on T-wave, and immediate induction of ventricular fibrillation. The ventricular fibrillation is obviously uh, very difficult to detect, so this may be uh, actually, um, looks more like an asystole, uh, we believe this is not a problem because the eventual treatment will be with an EAD. We should be able to differentiate true assistance from true ventricular fibrillation. So to conclude, 
there is a great need for a reliable and comfortable cardiac rhythm monitoring for arrhythmia detection. Arrhythmia detection with EPG signals using the cardiac sense technology, reliably detected sinus rhythm, atrial fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, and cardiac arrest in the EPE lab. Ventricular fibrillation and assistive give, give very similar PPG signals, but both are detected and recognized as cardiac arrest. The obvious next step is to test for arrhythmia detection in truly ambulatory patients. Thank you for your attention. Storage is of 12 months. Yes. How uh, comfortable is and how tight you have to have the bracelet on your wrist in order to get a good signal? Just, just like a watch. It doesn't have to be tight. What does, what does noise look like? The present model at the time of noise, it will stop recording avoid confusion, and the main challenge is going to be eventually to get ready of the noise to continue recording when you're moving. Okay, if not, I will conclude also the session. Thank you everybody for attending.